It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. 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 I tried to. I was studying for this last night before church. We were in East Tennessee, and uh, I was studying for this, and uh, I tried to get away from it. I tried uh, several times, and uh, the Lord wouldn't let me get away from it. So, after trying to get away from it, I said, okay, God, I'm going to do it your way, and I'm going to preach this message. Amen. Even if it's a few minutes and I have to condense it. Amen. Then this morning on the way home, I tried to get out of it again. Amen. But the brother yesterday got up and preached this entire message with a different title and different scripture, but he had the same subject line. And so I feel like this is of God, and I'm going to deliver it the way that I received it. Right. So if you have your Bibles, I'm going to go to Romans chapter 8. We'll do verse 6 through 8. The Bible says, For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Just for a moment, I titled this, Don't Be So Carnal Minded That You Become Spiritually Blind. Right. Amen. If you would, would you set your Bibles down and help me pray for just a moment? God, I thank you God, for the word. Thank you, Lord. I ask you, Lord, to know about this, Lord God, that I say nothing more than what you want me to say, Lord God. Lord, let me deliver this message the way you gave it to me. I pray. Lord, let none be offended, Lord God, but let all of be changed in Jesus' name, Lord God. Amen. Would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Amen. This is a representative of my spiritual backpack, and I've loaded it down, so it's it's kind of heavy. Amen. And it's it's a it's a weight on me. Amen. Carnality is the killer of the soul. You can get so lost in a carnal mind that you forget where you actually are spiritually. Amen. Anything you do or set your attention or your mind to that does not glorify God is for self-gratification or self-pleasure. And if it's not for God, then it's not of God. Therefore, it has to be of the world. Amen. There are so many things today that have distracted the church. The devil's job gets a lot easier with every new electronic device that comes out. And as a matter of fact, I believe this one right here holds to be the worst of them all. Amen. Since this came out, distractions have just went out the window. Amen. But we're distracting everything from television to cell phones, PlayStation to Xbox, Apple to Android, and desktop to laptop. We have distractions that are stacked up against us. Amen. It's gotten to the point where we've learned how to just come in and do church. Amen. We've come in and learned how to run through the motions. But we've learned how to come in and do it and then go back home to what we've been doing. Amen. We've learned to just play it out because we've had so many distractions. We're just packing our backpack and we've got the weight on our back. Amen. And so we've learned how to do this. But it's because our minds have been occupied doing other things. These four walls here make up a building that houses the church. Amen. We are the church of the living God, and this building houses us, but we're not just the church in the building. We're the church when we leave the building. Amen. We're the church in our home. We're the church in our store. Amen. We're the church no matter where we go. And so we have to be careful at what we look at and what we listen to because all we're doing is adding live weight to a dead spirit. Amen. And the Bible says that, that carnality leads to death. Amen. John said this in 1 John. He said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And hear me when I say that if you spend more time of your electronic devices than you do talking to Jesus or studying the word and you don't have a relationship with Jesus, you have a Sunday play date. 
Amen. And God's not looking to be your Sunday superhero. Amen. In Revelation, he said, I am the first. And he said, not only am I the first, but he said, I am the last. And he said, where two or three are gathered together in my name, he said, there I am in the middle. So not only is he the first and the last, he's everything in between. And that's what he has to be to us. Amen. I'm trying to move as quickly as I can. And this is serious times we're living in. This is very serious. And uh, it's gotten to the point where where carnality becomes a, and, and, and every day, and I'm guilty of it. It's not just I'm not I'm preaching this to myself, amen. And I try to get away from it, but this is serious times because if you never talk to the Lord, you're never going to hear His voice because He's never going to talk to you. And He said, "My sheep hear My voice, and I know them, and they follow Me." Yeah. Amen. We can follow people on everything from Twitter to YouTube, Facebook, Snapchat. I don't know what all they have out there. Amen. But the most important is that we follow Jesus. Amen. But if every new thing that hits the market has a place in your house, then you're following the carnal mind. Amen. You're just following the flesh. You're just adding weight. And this is pretty heavy. I'm telling you, I don't even know what I'll pack it with. But I love it. It's Bob's bag. It's the army bag. But it's heavy. And I'm just trying to help somebody that could be struggling with addiction. We all, we all have that one thing that just keeps our attention. Amen. For me, it was YouTube. And uh, and I've had to get away from that. If I open my YouTube more than I open my Bible, then I'm not, I'm not doing the will of God. Amen. The church used to be separated from the world. Amen. We used to be stood apart. And therefore, we had the upper hand. As a matter of fact, they couldn't even cuss on television. This is before my time. But they say they couldn't even say cuss words because the church had them on lockdown. It was when the church was quiet. That the TV and the world begin to take over. And I'm not against everything with fresh air, but I'm just trying to make it to heaven. Amen. And now it's got to the point where we mix and mingle with the world and we begin to shake hands with the enemy. Amen. And we wonder why God's not moving like he used to. We say, where are you, God? What's going on? Where's the feeling that we was used to be here? Because there seems to be a feeling of emptiness. I'll tell you why. Because we got so caught up in idols upon idols of gaming and social media and television. I'm trying to wrap it up, but I'll tell you this, it's a crying shame that my two-year-old can navigate a tablet front to back and get on the web, but it's hard to find an adult or even a young adult that can tell you where the book of Nahum is located in the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's sad, it's scary, or even what testament it's in. But I want to learn these things, and so I, so I have. And, and so I know where Nahum is, I know it has three chapters, amen, and I know that it Chapter 1 contains 15 verses. Chapter 2 contains 13 verses. And chapter 3 contains 19 verses. But I want to know these things. I don't know everything about the Bible. I don't know anywhere close to it. Amen. But I want to know these little things. I want to know the Lamentation says exactly between Jeremiah and Ezekiel. And it contains five chapters. Why? Because I want to help somebody. i got to help somebody get to heaven. It doesn't matter how many verses is in each chapter. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter that Genesis has 50 chapters, that Exodus has 40, that our 40th book is Matthew, that our longest gospel is Luke, that our shortest gospel is Mark. That doesn't matter, amen. But it helps me. Amen. It doesn't matter that we have 1,189 chapters. But to me, it mattered because when I was in the world, I gave everything I had to serve the devil. And when I got into church, I said, I'm going to serve everything what I got to serve God. I'm going to put everything into it. And I've got the plan. That's not just me. That's not, I, it doesn't matter what I say. 
in Facebook and in the Bible. But it doesn't matter what I say. It matters what the Word of God says. And listen, when I, when I stand before God on judgment, I'd rather know that I laid all my, all my sins at the altar than to get up before Jesus on judgment day and look back behind me and know that I'm dragging all that baggage behind me. Amen. Because you stand before him inexcusable and you'll have nothing to say. Amen. What do we do then? If we don't get a grip now, our young people are doomed. Amen. It'll be a burnout torch. No fire, no anointing, no holiness, no one being delivered, no one being saved, no one being healed. God forbid. Amen. That, that's not the will of God. But take me back to the old landmark. Take me back to our elders where they had church and they didn't look at the clock. Amen. Or when they had church, it was all night. I remember when I was a kid, we used to ride in a Winnebago because we didn't come home between morning and night service. Amen. Because there wasn't enough time to get back home and then get back to church. Amen. I'll leave you with the scripture that Paul said, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the dead body of this death? I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. So then with the mind, I myself serve the law of God. But with the flesh, the law of sin. Amen. If we want to see God move the way he used to and the way he still does, we have to set aside distractions. We have to set aside carnality. We have to come into church with prayer on our mind, not our best apostolic jokes. Amen. We've got to get in one mind and one accord because that's the will of God. And that's the Bible. It doesn't matter what I say. It doesn't matter what anybody says. But it's what the infallible word of God says. The unadulterated word of God. And church, I'm trying to make heaven my home and I'm trying to take people with me. But if we can't tell them how to get there because we're so distracted from social media, then we're doing nothing but setting up damnation for the entire world. Amen. And I don't want to be part of that. I'm glad to be part of the church. I'm glad to be part of Souls Harbor Apostolic. Yes. And I love every one of you. Y'all, yes. if y'all would, give the Lord a hand clap. Yes. Amen.